For the following exercises, determine whether the equation of the curve can be written as a linear function. All right, so first, what does it mean to be a linear function? Well, you can ask yourself, if we were to be able to graph it, right, you know a linear function is just a straight line. So it doesn't matter how you draw it, right? Straight line, whatever. So basically what you could do is you could graph this thing if you wanted. The other way to do it is more formulaically, meaning what's the formula of a linear function? Well, it has the general formula. I'm going to write it here. Okay, y, I'll write it down here. Y is equal to mx plus b. And this is what a linear function in terms of an equation will look like. You'll have m a slope and b a y-intercept. So if I'm not, if I can't can't graph this thing, uh, what I want to do then is try to break this thing down. Try to get this thing to look like this thing. All right, and just doing some algebra. Now you might already be looking at it and saying, hmm, something looks a little strange, but let me try to do it. So the first thing is I got to solve this thing for y. I want to get y by itself. So if that's the goal, add the 2, right? Add the 2x squared on over to the right-hand side. That would cancel, right? Leaving you with then 3y squared is equal to 2x squared plus 6. Divide out the 3 now from both sides, right? Divide that 3. You can actually now take this 3 and basically distribute it to each num uh, numerator term, if you like. So it would look something similar to this. So it would be 2 over 3, x squared, plus then 6 over 3. What's 6 over 3? You know this, right? It's 2. Now, I need to get y by itself, right? That means I'd have to take the square root, which is okay. I can do that on the left, right? I could also do that on the right. But is there any way I can get rid of this x squared? Well, no, right? Since we have two terms under the radical, we cannot basically distribute this radical to each of the terms. So there's no way, there's no way I can break this thing down to look like this. It's, it's literally impossible, all right? I, I be, Also, right, again, I cannot get rid of that x squared. And even if I were to plug this in, square root of 3, uh, excuse me, 2 over 3 x squared plus 2, there's no square root in this. Okay, so there's literally no way that this can be done. So if there's no way I can make it match up, well, if you think about that, right? If there's no way that if the if the, if if there's no way possible that I can do it, doesn't mean that that's the answer, right? It just means I might not know how to do it. But but I'm positive in this case. All right, just in case for anyone who was thinking philosophically about what I was saying. So it it's, it, it is impossible. Okay, um, so now. Let's take a look at the next one. So what our job here is, our job is to take this thing and break it down into y equals something. So the first thing is I notice y is basically by itself. Well, first thing, I like to write it on the left, right? I'm sure a lot of you do too. So I'm going to write 2y is equal to negative, negative x minus 3 over 5. The next thing I realize is I can divide by 2, but let me try to clean this up a little bit, all right? Now notice this is a negative term. There's a negative term here. So basically what I can do is distribute that negative, right? I'll move this over a little bit. I'll put this in parentheses. So basically first what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute this negative to each of the numerator terms. Okay? So that would look make this look something like this. 2y. And let me do this a little bit further to the left. Just give myself a little more space. So this would be equal to then 2y minus x plus 3 all over 5. Now I like that a little better, right? Because there's no negative hanging outside. Now what I'm going to do is take this denominator term and basically, quote unquote, distribute it to each of the numerator terms, okay? So I'm going to break it up into basically two fractions instead of one whole fraction. So this is 2y will be equal to negative x over 5. Or remember, there's a little coefficient of 1 there, right, in front of the x. So I could also rewrite that, which might make it a little clearer. 1 over 5x, they're the same thing plus then 3 over 5, okay? So that looks good, right? That looks good. Now what I'm going to do is now I can divide by 2, okay? Or in other words, or in other words, and by the way, there's more than one way to do this. Or in other words, I would take this side and multiply it by the reciprocal of 2, okay? Either divide it by 2 or multiply it by the reciprocal of 2. They're both going to work out to be equivalent. In this problem, though, it might make a little more sense or it might be a little clearer if I multiply by one half instead of thinking of dividing by two. Now what's going to happen is this half basically cancels, right, that two, so I'm left with y. 
And now when I take a half and I distribute it now to each of the two terms in here, what are we going to get? Well, we're going to get, when you take one half and multiply it by negative one fifth, it's going to be negative one tenth. X plus then, when I do that math, it's going to be three over 10, right? When you multiply fractions, you just simply multiply the numerator and the denominator. Now let's take a step back. Does this equation look like it follows the form y is equal to mx plus b? It does, right? It kind of, it does. I have y by itself, so that's a check. The next thing I have is my slope, negative one-tenth, which is fine. There's the slope, m. Then I have my x term. There's no square there, so that's cool, right? And then I have plus b, and the three-tenths uh, is my b term. So look, they match. So if they match, what can I conclude? I can conclude that indeed, this is a linear function. All right, so hopefully that helps guys. We appreciate it very much, thanks for watching the video, and we'll see you soon. Have a great day.